Hi YouTube, this is Joe Calton with Calton Cutlery. You can visit me on the web, caltoncutlery.com. So today is going to be a uh, review video. You know, I don't do a whole lot of those, but I suppose I should probably do more of them because, um, you know, I've been a knife maker now for more or less full time for like 10, 12, 13 years, something like that. And so, you know, a lot of my tools are... Um, you know, I mean, they've been around for a while, you know, I mean, uh, I've used them long enough to know, uh, easy there, Doc. You know, Doc chases that, those dang tennis balls all over the shop, and he had one, he's got one up underneath the bench, and he was reaching for it, and then he must have pulled back, and his collar caught my arbor press, and, uh, you know, I just screw it to the bench top when I need it, and, um, when he came back, it came with him. Yeah, I think he'll be all right. <clears throat> Where were we? Okay, uh, bench vice. Okay, and um, and the fact that I've had quite a few of these tools for a while now, and so um, you know, I think I can give you a pretty good review of uh, you know how well they work and whatnot. So today is on the bench vice. Um, the bench. The bench vise is, is one of your most used tools. Um, so, you know, it's best not to skimp on it. So get about the best that you can afford, right? Um, this one right here, um, it's a Wilton. I bought it at Home Depot. It was one of my, one of my first uh, big purchases at the time. And I remember spending like I don't know, $125, something like that on this on this bench vise. <coughs> Home Depot now sells a vise that looks similar to this, um, but it goes by a different name, and I can't remember what the name was. Um, Amazon does have uh, this vise. It's not painted blue. It's, it's gray, but it does say Wilton on the side of it, and it is the same. It, it looks like it's the same vise, and I want to say they want like $180 for it or so. Which would be about right. I mean, 10 years worth of inflation. Actually, that would be a little bit on the low side. <coughs> so anyway, so this vice and I have been through an awful lot together. And, you know, I mean, the thing still works. I mean, it just, it just flat out works. There's never any problems with it. Um, you know, I mean, occasionally I, ha I need to oil the thing. I probably uh, need to oil it more often than, than what I do. But... You know, that's kind of the way it is with all working tools. So anyway, so, um, so yeah, we'll give you a close-up here. And then while we're at it, we'll go ahead and oil it up. Um, yeah, and do some regular maintenance on it, which honestly is just oiling pretty much. So this is a 5-inch a vise, and they class that by your jaws. So your jaws are a 5-inch wide jaw. These jaws are replaceable. Um, you take these screws out right here, and then that whole jaw comes off. Same way with this side. And then you can replace them. I do have a set of uh, rubber jaws for it. I think these came with it. And they're magnetic, so you just slap it up there. And they've got some little grooves and stuff in there, you know, for holding stuff that you don't want to mar. Um, I don't really use them a whole lot. Um, somewhere around in here. Ha, huh, there they are. I'm not sure where the other one is, but that's just a piece of copper sheet, or a brass sheet, that I just bent at a, you know, a 90 degree angle so that it's got a lip. So if I want to grip something and not mar it, and I want to grip it harder than what the... You know, because the rubber ones, you grab it, and they've got so much give that, you know, stuff can still move when you're, when they're gripped in there. So these brass jaws, they work really good. <clears throat> I suppose I've heard of guys making soft jaws, um, you know, or, or recutting the serrations in the ones that are here. Honestly, I, uh, the ones that are there just work just fine. Um, it does open up quite a ways. And that's one of the things that we need to do while we're here is oil the thing up. And this is just uh, whey oil for the lathe. Probably should have grabbed a rag while I was there, huh? Hmm. 
use that first little bit of oil to kind of clean some of the gunk off of it and then I'm going to set you back down so I can use both hands for this one put another strip of oil on there close it all the way down oh you know we should have grabbed a measurement of how far it opens which is alright because then we'll get to oil it on both sides so oil it on this and then oil it on the back there <coughs> okay so it opens up oh it's got a five inch opening so five inch jaws <coughs> and a five inch opening <coughs> this one not only is it great because actually can I get you all closer here There we go. Um, this one is great. Not only does it, uh, you know, open up and close like a normal bench vise does, but if you if you hit this uh, locking screw right here, then the whole thing flips. Now we'll see. And it rotates a full 360 degrees, which that's a little on the, the tight side, too. I wonder if we can get some oil in there. I don't see that that's got a cover plate unless it's this part. You know, this is one thing, I mean, I've never taken the thing apart. Um, like I said, the thing just works. I suppose we... Oh, I guess if we pulled that out... Why then it would help. We'll just put some more oil in there just because more oil is more better. So anyway, so this rotates a full 180 degrees, right? So this is your, uh, the set that you use the most. This right here is for um, clamping pipe or anything round, okay? So uh, an example of that is these knife maker um, handle jigs. All this is, is ah. we've got a couple of bolts that go into nuts that are welded on the size of a, side of a piece of thick walled pipe. Okay, and inside we've got two pieces of steel that are faced with leather. Alright, so what you do is you clamp the the pipe up in that, you know, the pipe holder side, and then, watch out, Wyatt, uh, you would grab a knife, put it in there, tighten the, the bolts down, which will squeeze those two plates together, and now you can work on the handle, right? The great thing about this vise is that since this portion rotates 180 degrees, you can put it here, you can put it here, you can put it here, all the way straight up and down if you're working on the underside of a guard. You can put it back. You can tighten it up, loosen it, twist it this way, that way, this way, this way, and that way. You know, whatever, right? Well, then the base also rotates. And you've got two grub screws, one on each side, that, that do that. So now you can rotate it this way. So if you want to work on it, lift it up, sand this portion, move it over, sand this portion, bring it down, sand this portion, slip it over if you need to get a little bit better angle, uh, you know, anything that you want. So these right here are real handy. And then it's also got these doohickey jaws right here that I guess... Um, You can clamp and hold round stuff straight up and down. That, <coughs> I hardly ever use this. I think I've used it maybe two or three times the entire time I've had the, the bench vise. But I can see sometimes where it would come in handy. So anyhow, so that's the knife maker's vise. 
So then, um, and you can lock this down. I mean, with that grub screw, if you wanted to lock it in at this angle, you know, it's locked in. Uh, another thing is as soon as you tighten the vice part up, it locks at that angle. Okay, so you don't even have to tighten up that grub screw if you want it locked there. Um, it does have a... Uh, an angle degree doohickey thingamabob here. Um, it didn't really have a, a point right here. So I remember I cut a little groove in there with like a Dremel tool. And now of course the, uh, you know, the graduations on the, uh, the thingy, you know, they're kind of worn off. You can't really see them anymore. There's also a ruler right here so that you can tell how far that you have it open. But honestly, I've never really used that. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Mounting. Okay, so when you go to, to mount your bench vise, okay, the less this thing moves, the easier any kind of work you do on it is going to be. Okay, so <clears throat> If you're going to clamp up a piece of steel in this thing and grab a hacksaw and cut it in half, right? Well, if this moves back and forth as you're cutting, that's part of your stroke that's being used up, um, you know, in the movement of the, the work piece, okay? So the more solid you can get this, the more better. And right now, of course, I'm shaking the bench, and y'all are sitting on a stool on top of the bench, and so you're shaking some. <coughs> so... When I, now, you guys have seen my bench before. It's like 32 by fours that are glued and screwed together edgewise, right? When I went to mount, mount the bench vise, I took a piece of, I think that's half inch. I thought it was three eighths, but I think it's half. Yeah, it is. Because this, this ruler's got a little step there, so. Yeah, so this is half inch plate. Um, half inch plate steel that's, was that 13? 12 inches wide. And it goes back all the way to the back of the bench, which is, I want to say like 30 inches. So it's bolted down to the bench top. And then the, the bench vise is bolted through the plate to the, the underside of the, I think you can see the bolt hole or the bolts up in there. And then there's two of them in the back. <coughs> so it's a pretty rock solid setup. And if you're going to be um, setting up a bench vise, I would suggest you do kind of the same thing. I mean, if you can't find any half inch plate and all you can find is quarter inch, hey, go for it. If you can find one inch and you can afford it, you know, and you can justify the expense, then go with one inch. I mean, the more heavier, the more better. Um, it does have a little anvil portion right here. Uh, honestly, I do use this, but it's for very light. Um, I don't even use this for normal peening of pins. Um, I, I will peen a pin on this occasionally, but <clears throat> not very often. So this is, I mean, it is an anvil, but it's not, it's not like a real anvil, you know, like the, the forging anvil over there, or even a piece of two inch thick plate, you know, that you put on the bench top. Um, so it's kind of for light duty use only. About the only other maintenance I ever do to this thing, besides the occasional oiling it and, you know, occasionally, very occasionally cleaning it, is the tops of your, your jaws. You can see that they're, you know, kind of scratched up, you know, from when I was filing and then, you know, filed down into the, um, the jaws. Right here I've got a groove filed. I don't really have a, anything to show you why, but if you're, if you're pinning something together and you've got a pin sticking out on both sides, like, you know, like say, a, a, you know, handle scales, <coughs> that groove right there, um, your, the ends of your pin can set down in that groove. And then when you tighten it up, you know, it just, uh, it gives the pl pins a place to sit. So occasionally I'll come over with a, uh, a fine file and just run across the top 
you know, get rid of any burrs or, uh, uh, you know, welding splatter or, or uh, you know, anything like that that might have uh, come across the top. You know, I've used this as a filing guide. I mean, it is mild steel, but it's pretty wide and it works pretty good for that too. So, actually, let's move you back now. So yeah, that's about it. I mean, like I said, I've had the thing for, I don't know, 12, 13, 15 years, something like that. It's worked really, really awesome for me. And um, you know, I hope that at least that one on Amazon is kind of the same deal. Um, you know, 180 bucks might kind of seem like an awful lot of money for something that just, that just holds your work. But, you know, the more you make knives, the more you tinker in the shop, um, the more you realize that that holding your workpiece is actually half the battle. You know, if you're, um, you know, fitting up a guard, uh, you know, or, or holding a piece of a metal that you're sawing or something like that, you know, your bench vise is, man, it's about your best friend when it comes to working on pieces of material like that. So it pays to get a good one. Um, <coughs> An awful lot of the other really nice bench vices don't have the, um, uh, you know, the, the, the rotating, uh, they're not able to rotate like this. They'll just rotate around like this and then the jaw opens and closes. Those I can see them being more precise and probably tougher than something like this. But man, I have, you know, I've done some pretty hard work on this. Uh, beaten on it when I pro I mean more than probably what I should have and you know the thing just keeps on working and that rotating head man that comes in really handy um, you know just for holding different uh, you know different things like that knife maker or that handle jig you know being able to just position whatever it is that you're working on pretty much wherever you want it um, this thing just works really good so again, this is Joe Calt. Uh, I'll go ahead and put a link to this one, uh, that Amazon link, um, <coughs> down in the description, uh, so you can check it out if you want to. Um, yeah, I don't have a link to the the steel plate, and honestly, you wouldn't want to pay to ship something like that anyway. You just get that at your local steel yard. So again, this is Joe Calton with Calton Cutlery. You can visit me on the web, caltoncutlery.com. Hope you enjoyed the review, and uh, we will see you next time.